So in the last video we talked about the difference between producers and consumers or autotrophs and heterotrophs and we also spoke about the fact that while energy flows through the ecosystem, matter is recycled through the ecosystem. Now in this video I want to focus on the types of autotrophs. Here you see a picture of the most common type of autotroph that people think of when they think of something that's a producer and they are called phototrophs. Now phototrophs, photo for light. Phototrophs means somebody that can make energy from the sun into organic energy trapped inside of sugar. And there are many examples of such organisms and you see them represented here on the screen. That includes algae uh, that lives in the oceans and cyanobacteria as well as plants that live in the water or in the land. And the algae and the plants have these organelles inside of their cells which are called chloroplasts which actually descend from an ancient cousin of the cyanobacteria which when, when inside the cell, we'll talk more about that later in the year when we do evolution. But either way, phototrophs are all related basically. But what you need to know is that they're all organisms which are capable of trapping the energy from the sun into sugar and do the process of photosynthesis. But this is not the only way to make energy. There's also chemotrophs which perform chemosynthesis. Chemosynthesis, instead of using the energy from the sun, they use other chemicals and other types of metabolic pathways to generate their energy. So they have different nutrients, different processes entirely. You don't really need to know much about this, you just need to know that it exists, that photosynthesis is not the only way to create energy in food chains. In fact, there's two types on Earth. While the majority of the energy on the Earth's food webs or ecosystems come from the sun through the processes of photosynthesis, there's also chemosynthesis, which uses different kinds of processes. Very common near things like uh, hydrothermal vents in the bottom of oceans. And in fact, the original life forms on Earth were probably chemosynthetic, not photosynthetic. But these are the two different types of life forms there is. If you know this much, it's great. You can stop the video now. But now I'm going to also talk about some other kinds of cool autotrophs that exist out there. Extra. You don't really need to know this. You're not going to be tested on it. The first type I want to talk about is, is called mycotrophs or mycoheterotrophs. These are types of plants usually. They're, what they do is that they, they are parasites that, that basically feed off the chemicals produced by fungus. Now, mycotrophs are, don't really kill the fungus. They live in symbiotic relationships with the fungus. But they need a symbiotic relationship in order to do their job. An example of that is some types of orchid families like you see on the top left. So they will live and feed off the fungus and get some of the chemicals that they need in order to do their energy off the fungus. Myco mycoheterotrophs are the ones that actually are parasite plants. They, they basically eat the fungus as part of their process of creating energy. And they need both that and the photosynthesis to live. So it's not as simple as a typical plant. That's the one you see in the middle there, another kind of orchid family too. Orchids, a lot of them are these weird kinds of autotrophs. You also have litho autotrophs. And lith litho means uh, rock, right? So litho autotrophs are literally autotrophs that live off chemicals in rock. They, they, they feed off the substrate. They feed off the rock in which they live. And this is very common all over the world too. And it's actually an example of a very ancient type of life form. And several types of bacteria are like that. You also have photoheterotrophs and chemoheterotrophs. Now you know how um, photosynthesis requires the presence of carbon dioxide in order for the process to, to happen. The plants, the algae, the cyanobacteria, whatever you call it, needs to trap carbon dioxide from the atmosphere to put it into sugar. Photoheterotrophs and chemoheterotrophs are the, pretty much the same thing as a, a, a phototroph and a chemotroph, except that they can't process carbon dioxide. They get their, uh, they use a different process where they get carbon from different sources, typically or other types of organic compounds which are produced by other producers. So it's like they do photosynthesis, they do chemosynthesis, but they don't trap carbon dioxide to do it. They got to work off a byproduct that's created by another producer. Again, you don't need to know anything about these. I just thought for curiosity's sake that you should know that. Uh, the, those two simple processes of, of getting energy through photosynthesis and chemosynthesis are not the only way to do it. There's also plants out there that require uh, a symbiotic relationship with fungus. 
or that actually live as parasites on the fungus. There's also autotrophs that feed off the rock, and there's also chemotrophs and phototrophs that, that need to get their carbon uh, out of other sources other than carbon dioxide, which means they rely on other producers. So in a way, they're almost like heterotrophs, but they're still uh, uh, considered autotrophs because they do produce their own energy. It's just that they can't produce it off the typical carbon dioxide. So they rely on other organisms to do their jobs. So those are the types of producers. In the next video, we talk about heterotrophs.